Welcome back to Tub Talks. This is episode two. For anyone that hasn't watched this series before, it's a new series that I started where I basically answer your dilemmas, treat me as an agony on. I basically call it Tub Talks because we can all just chill, grab a tea. I'm doing my nails today in the bathtub because I ripped off my other ones and you guys know that I love my nails and I love spicing them up every single week. So that's what I'm going to be doing today whilst answering your dilemmas. We have a fair few today, so let's get straight on into them. And I'm just going to show you the nails before we get started though because i'm literally in love with them i've worn the top set before so i think i might go for the middle set now do i go for the middle or do i go for the bottom the bottom is quite funky i might do that before it goes out of fashion because it is a trend at the minute so straight off the bat we have a massive one that says hi honey my ex-boyfriend cheated on me with the guy he told me not to worry about oh sh <laughs> as cliche as it sounds, it's true and I've been struggling to get over him and move on. Every now and again, I feel really regretful over everything that happened as our breakup was messy and involved him lying about being on medication. I won't get into the full story because that would be like writing an essay. I've been having a hard time trying to get over him and I just wanted to know if you had any advice. Thanks a million. Oh, babe. Advice to get over someone. I mean, it's difficult because everyone has different ways of coping with things for example my coping mechanism was to have a complete breakdown for about three years and then i slowly got over it if i think about the actual getting over it stage i didn't handle the breakup very well it was very unexpected there was like a lot of questions that i didn't have answers to that i thought for the longest time i needed to have answers for which i didn't because even if I had those answers, it's just gonna hurt just as much. So after about two years, I realized that in order to move on, I kind of just needed to accept that it happened and see it as a learning curve that I obviously had to experience this to see red flags in the future or to realize that I shouldn't be treated that way. And obviously you said you've been cheated on. So this now will maybe allow you to see in the future red flags a lot quicker and then maybe you can get out before the situation gets to them cheating. I obviously hope you you never get cheated on again because it is literally the foulest thing to go through. I am really sorry to hear that that happened. But everything is a lesson. Like I never regret anything or dating anyone or meeting anyone because it teaches you so many things and prepares you for life. If you never knew about these things and you never came into contact with negativity, you'd never know how to handle it. I guess just be thankful that we're young. I feel like, I don't know actually how old you are, but I feel like with my audience, I feel like you are fairly young around my age maybe. So I feel like having experienced that will prepare you for the future and hopefully you'll never have to go through it again because you'll see signs of it quicker. But in terms of getting over it, yeah, like it took a while and I feel like you probably will experience the same, especially as you said you're having a hard time already. But you've just got to focus on your friends, like try and find hobbies. Honestly, I took up reading and it really helps. I've mentioned this in quite a few videos. Reading really helped me because it's a bit of an escapism. You're transforming your life into a different world. You're completely changing the narrative to something completely unrealistic. Like I love true crime books or murder mystery books because it really gets your brain going because you think like, oh my God, who did it? Who could murder a bee? Like how did they get away with this? And it kind of, it isn't love related. You're not reading a book about two people falling in love and then reminding yourself like, oh, I love, I miss love, I miss being in love. Finding a book and reading about something that is off topic, I found very beneficial. Films also do help like getting into a really good series, but I feel like that's a short term fix and you don't get as engrossed in a film. Like you could easily just go on your phone whilst watching a film and multitask. Whereas reading, you have to really, really focus and it just completely takes your brain to another land and I I guess it is escapism. It's escapism from reality. And eventually you will consume your mind with all these made up narratives from books that you kind of just forget about real life problems. Like it sounds really weird, but that's what happened to me. I would work. I worked at Urban Outfitters at the time and I'd also have my uni and I did YouTube. So I had two jobs technically and then my university degree. And then in my spare time, I'd see my friends and read. There wasn't a time where I could have thought about the sadness or thought about the breakup or how should I miss that person because I just consume it with other things like other hobbies, things that make me happy. I feel like that is good advice maybe. I don't know, that could be really bad advice. But I'm not an expert on <laughs> getting over someone. It did take me a long time. But you just need to allow yourself to feel it for a bit have some good cries, maybe around good company, your family, your friends, obviously it depends where you are during this current time, but talking about it helps. 
it really helps because you're not just consuming your own wine with it. Maybe try journaling. There is so much. If you are really struggling, I did a video called How to Get Out of a Rut. I will leave it in the eye up here. And I feel like that really helps getting yourself back on track, getting motivated, not consuming your wine with the sadness. So maybe that will watch. I don't know. Maybe it will help you. Hopefully it does. Sorry that was so long-winded, but I really hope you're okay and I know you're going to get over it because it doesn't last forever. That sadness does not last forever. Hey, Haz. So when I was in high school, I really fancied this boy and it was the first time I actually you really like someone oh i miss like the feeling of well no i don't miss the feeling i guess i'm experiencing it now i absolutely love the feeling of crushing on someone like it is it's just so cute like you just like jump around being so happy well that's a really um massive contrast from what we just spoke about but i absolutely love it so much oh i've got a little hair on me i was never with him because he was in the popular group as everyone would call it and he always kept it a secret that we were taught that's bizarre but me being stupid i still really liked him and he would tell me that he loved me and everything god I knew I was being led on. Anyway, I left school a few years ago and I've not liked anyone since I've liked him. And I was so scared I won't feel like that towards anyone again. I've tried speaking to other boys and stuff, but I just don't feel the same way about anyone. Do you have any advice? So it sounds like you have a strong case of a high school crush. And I'm only laughing because we've all been there. We've all liked someone for way too many years than we should have. And if you haven't, you're one of the lucky ones. Good job for you. But I can't think of exactly who it was right now, but I definitely experienced that where like, I liked someone someone for so long and I'd speak to other people and I was just like mm, yeah it's just not hitting quite the same but this was a very strong high school mentality like it didn't really exceed past high school for me the only time I felt this was during my teen years so you will definitely grow out of that and also you'll learn to realize that that boy isn't that special <laughs> like I can't remember who I liked in high school or dated in high school but I thought it was the end of the world if that person didn't like me back I thought it was the end of the world if I wasn't in the popular group or if this certain girl didn't like me because she was a popular girl i thought it was the end of the world but honestly you don't think about those things when you grow up and i know that that's your life right now so it does seem like a massive issue but you just have to remind yourself like oh my god i've got so much of my life ahead of me i'm not even gonna think about this in five years and also if you think about it as well you're missing out on a lot of opportunities of meeting new people naturally by shutting yourself off because of this guy the fact that you could go on holiday and bump into someone but you're consistently comparing them to how much you like that guy obviously you're getting older you might go on a night out you could meet someone through friends of friends family friends like there's so many natural environments you will meet someone and you're so young by the sounds of it i mean you said since high school and since you left so i assume it wasn't really that long ago honestly you will forget about that boy and if it's meant to be he'll come back into your life in a few years but i have a feeling it won't happen and you will just get over him and you'll meet someone else there's plenty more fish in the sea you've got so much of your life ahead of you in terms of like getting over him and not comparing him to boys that you might be seeing in the future i mean realistically you can't really stop comparing people i had an issue where i would compare like past relationships to new people i was speaking to and i just thought oh they're not as nice as that person or they don't speak to me in the same way but then i had to tell myself of course they're not people are different i am different to my best friends i'm different to my neighbor i'm different to my family like that's the whole point of being individual and unique so if you can just try to see it as a new person like new beginnings does that make sense because everyone is going to bring something different to the table. If everyone was the same, it would honestly be so boring. And if anything, be thankful that they're not like that guy that you met in high school. I will tell you now, I don't want to sound mean, but because of the like the clicky friendship groups, he was probably trying to protect his ego and saw it as like embarrassing to talk to someone that wasn't in the popular group, which obviously is so, so sh and like I can't even stress enough how stupid that is. But that's the mentality of kids in high school. You obviously deserve so much better than that and people you meet now outside of high school are not going to be embarrassed to talk to you. They're not going to shy away and hide you in front of their friends. They're going to be openly proud of talking to you and seeing you. I'm kind of glad you're out of high school. High school's pretty but yeah that is the only advice that i can give is just try and be more open-minded whenever you do catch yourself comparing him to i don't know someone else you're seeing just immediately try and block it out of your mind and be like this is a new person new personality new characteristics new actions do you know what i mean it's more just like willpower to see past that person so i have this boy best friend who i have known since we were like two but when i was 10 i moved quite far away from him and i miss him a lot that is so sad honestly moving away from like your closest friends when you were younger 
that is so heartbreaking. God, I feel for you. We didn't have much contact until last year after four years of not living there, knowing much. I finally found him on social media and got in touch. It's so sweet. We've talked on FaceTime quite a bit and it's gone really well and we've had a great laugh. We have always clicked and I'm hoping to see him this summer under safe guidelines, obviously. But my problem is I like him maybe more than just a best friend. Sometimes I feel like he could be that person for me. I don't know. I am excited to hopefully see him. But if we were to be more, I don't know how that would work. What should I do about all of it? Girl, you just put your two cents in. I personally think because of the close connection that you guys will have, because like obviously she said you've known him since you were two and you're talking all the time and stuff, he might actually feel the same because you have a close connection. Sometimes this is the difficult thing. Sometimes when you have a close connection with someone, you can confuse it with love or liking someone. It could be two different types of love. You could love them more like, I don't know, like a friend. And then you might be confusing that. I don't know, obviously, if you've had partners before, if you've liked someone before, but maybe the closeness for you is what you are confusing with it. But on the other hand, you could actually really like him, as you said. I personally think wait until you meet him because obviously it has been a while since you've seen him in person. So he could be completely different. He could be really nice, like in moderation. Does that make sense? And then you meet up and you don't really like him. Obviously, I wouldn't tell him before in case you meet him and regret your decision pretty much but this could actually be the start of something new as Troy Barbon would say I really do think that it could be such a good thing and the fact that you've known each other for so long and you're not in some weird like triangle of friendship I feel like that is going to be so cute if you two do actually like each other so I think wait until you've met bite the bullet tell him if it doesn't feel the same just be like okay well don't take it any further it's not going to ruin the friendship just I don't know, see how things go. So this one is making me laugh because it says, don't get me wrong, I love my best friend in pieces, but never a good one when they start like that, is it? I think I've actually just broke my leg. So I'm just gonna want to swivel around this way a little bit, just in case I actually have no sprained my ankle. So don't get me wrong, I love my best friend to pieces and I would do anything for her, but sometimes I feel so worthless compared to her because of all the opportunities that she gets and I work harder for the stuff that I get. It makes me sound toxic and I hate that, but I don't feel like this was my other friend. I want to be happy for her and I hate I feel like this, but she rubs it in my face all the time. I will be honest, you do sound a bit toxic, <laughs> but you're not going to like my advice. You're not going to like the answer that I'm going to give you. Basically, you do sound toxic because it is jealousy. Like you saying, oh it's so annoying that she's got this because i work hard for it blah, blah, blah. sadly that's just life like life just works that way and if she truly is your best friend you should be happy for her with whatever opportunity she gets even if you got offered the same opportunity and she ends up getting it the point of being a best friend is being happy for them no matter what i feel like this is a you issue and not her issue if she's rubbing it in your face like that is obviously really f and i don't know why she would be doing that but I don't think this is a her problem. I think she's probably just being really happy and overly excited about her successes and wants to share them, share the excitement with her best friend and celebrate it. You're taking it the opposite way because you think it's her rubbing it in. I really don't see it as her rubbing it in. For example, if my best friend came to me and told me about something massive that they have achieved, but it's a brand that I wanted to work with, I'm not going to turn around and be like, oh, again taking my jobs or like working with brands I want to work with. I'm so jealous. You don't do jack shit. I'm not gonna do that. I guess it's different circumstance because I generally do think my friends are hard workers and deserve every single thing they get. I wouldn't ever like get jealous over well I get jealous oh my god for some of the things that my friends have out yeah I'd get jealous actually it wouldn't be like an angry jealous it would be like an aspiring jealous or inspiring jealous like they've had that and I see it's achievable because it's so close to me now oh my god I know that I can do that now as well if anything when my friends achieve big things I just see it as inspo like it motivates me to work harder and hopefully I can reach that goal at some point so I feel like this is a you issue huh? and I know everyone's probably probably really confused as to why I'm giving that advice during like an agony on but guys i gotta be honest you know i have to be honest i think this is a you issue here also can i just say i know that i'm wearing the same bikini but i didn't want to get my triangle ones out yet because it's it's not summer quite frankly and i want to save them but if you guys know any good websites for bikinis do let me know because i'd love to get some more like this i love it so cute i love the color i love the fact that it's covering my pancakes but i, I only have these smallness like this the rest of them are different how do i tell my mum i'm on my period i'm scared this one is such a common one for like people growing up so i was in the same position i was so scared to get my period for a while and i didn't really know 
how I was gonna, I don't know, come out with it if I ever did just randomly start my period. But the thing that I just kept telling myself was, Byron, I need to call him because I think the house is burning down. Just bear with that period of thought for one minute. Can you smell that? Is that something in here? Or is that you? Yeah, quickly, Oh, okay. I thought the house was burning down. Silly me. Okay, in regards to periods, let's get straight back to it. I was really scared to start my period. My mum gave me a little pink book that told me all the things I need to know about puberty. We didn't really have a conversation. It was kind of just like, here, read this book. It's going to tell you everything. Sex ed was not a thing, really. When I was in high school, they didn't really teach you that much. They just said you're gonna bleed and that's probably about it. If anyone is scared of starting their period, just that you know, there's nothing to worry about. As you get older, you'll get used to the pain and there's a million and one different things that you can do to lower your pain, lower the frequency, lower the amount that comes out. Like there's so much you'll learn when you're older and if anyone wants like a proper girl talk video where that goes heavily in depth, then do let me know. I could do a whole tub talks on girl talk. Periods, puberty, breasts, everything, body hair, like anything you guys wanna know if you want to submit it down below in the agony art link for tub talks then definitely please do we could definitely make that a thing but it's something to be afraid of but i get like telling your parents or telling your mum telling your nan whoever you have to tell telling your dad it is very scary when you're younger because you think it's something to be embarrassed of but it's not it's completely natural that most women go through like you're gonna have it your whole life you know what i mean when i told my nan about my period it got to the point where i was the last one in my friendship group and i was begging for my period like I'm sure I've said this on YouTube before, but I was sat at my desk, my laptop, all of my friends had had their period, they were all talking about it, and I just felt really left out, and I was quite literally praying to the gods to have my period, and lo and behold, I came on it. I must have just, like, told my body, yeah, I'm ready for it now, and it came, like, it's really weird. I don't know how to explain that, but yeah, I had my period, and I bled everywhere, quite frankly, all over my seat, all over the floor, it was traumatic, and the pains were ridiculous, and I didn't know how to go in tell my nan i lived with my nan grand at the time i didn't know how to go in and tell them hi just so you know i've just like massacred my bedroom i'm only 12 but i just massacred the bedroom hope that's okay i say only 12 obviously everyone starts periods at different times but for me i felt like i was so late but i feel like that's a fairly normal time but anyway it doesn't matter when you start your period the bottom line is how to tell your parents all you have to remember is if you're telling a member of your family that has had a period before then there's nothing to be scared about like they literally have had it before i would have been more scared if I was telling my granddad and my dad who I know hasn't had a period but luckily for me my nan just did that for me because obviously when I'd like to name my dad he had to then have like tampons and stuff like that for me but regardless of who you do need to tell just remember it's natural and just come out with it as scared as you are you literally just need to blur the words out and that's it that is the worst of it you're not gonna get punished for it you're not gonna get like embarrassed because it's a natural thing and you, you need to tell someone because you need to go and get the materials for it and as hard as it's going to be it's a conversation that needs to be had and everyone's had it at some point in their life whether it's with someone being told that they're on their period or whether you're telling someone yeah just embrace it groovy girl i'm in a happy relationship with my boyfriend but i know my best friend doesn't think we're right for each other i don't know if that's just because they keep having arguments why do your boyfriend and your best friend keep having arguments? Unless you're like a really tight-knit friendship group. Oh, they're arguing because she thinks she's always third wheeling. Now that's a sticky one. But I don't know what to do because I know it's a healthy and happy relationship. Well, I'm sorry, right? Obviously, when you have a boyfriend or a partner, they are also kind of your best friend. And I feel like there can be some jealousy there sometimes if you are spending more time with your boyfriend. However, it's just something that your best friend has to accept. Like, she should be happy that you're happy. I know for a fact that there has been times where I've been like, third wheeling with my friends but you kind of just have to accept that that's just life people are growing up you will grow apart from your friends as you grow up or you could get a boyfriend or a partner or a girlfriend you might grow apart from your best friend the trick is to obviously keep everyone involved but it's like you are going to want to have nights where you're not with your best friend so that you can be with your partner and that is okay it's just your best friend has to get used to that and i know that sucks because being that best friend really hurts because you think you're losing your best friend but you're not i feel like you push 
your friend away more by saying like, oh, I'm third weaving and oh, I hate this. And you know, like making an issue out of the situation, you push your friend away more. Whereas if you accept it and you just let it happen and understand that that's just the way life is, people do want to spend time with their boyfriend without you being there. That is completely fine. Once you accept that, it's actually easier for them to date and you're not ruining their relationship. I know you don't mean to come across like that and that is really nasty for me to say. You're just gonna make life harder. That is to your best friend, sorry, not to you. But for advice for you, just just continue doing what you're doing like your relationship isn't hurting anyone especially you you're happy and in a healthy relationship there is nothing that anyone can do about that your best friend can try and ruin it as much as she likes but she's not a true best friend if she does that and i mean that with all honesty if your best friend is trying to sabotage your relationship or even your friendship because of a partner that you are happy being with they're not really your best friend they should want your happiness and as long as you're happy that should be it so i think maybe just have a conversation with her and be like look this is going Going really well and i'm happy but if we keep having these fallouts or if you keep falling out with my boyfriend then it's gonna get messy and i'm not gonna be happy anymore she kind of has to make the decision does she want to still be your friend or does she want to make it difficult you know what i mean hey so <laughs> Hey girl, are you a girl? So my best friend recently came out to me and I'm obviously so, so supportive of her. She told me she has a crush on me. So I'm very glad to hear that you're supportive and that's cute. I love her, but as a friend and I'm not sure what to do is I really value her and our friendship, but I just don't see her that way. What do I do? Just tell her if she is as good of a friend as you say she is, she should just accept the fact that you don't like her. Obviously, you completely have to respect people's boundaries, the fact that that might not be your sexuality, the fact that you might not be into that gender. It's like if I was to turn around to one of my friends who was straight and say like, yeah, I'm head over heels in love with you. I have to understand the fact that they aren't my sexuality and I shouldn't expect them to like me back just because I like them. It's the same as when someone is straight and they fall in love or like, I don't know, the person of the opposite gender. They don't just expect them to like them back. The same still applies if any one of my friends told me that they liked me and I didn't feel the same. I just like, I really appreciate that, but like, don't feel the same. But I'm cool with still being friends with you. And hopefully they're chill enough about it that you can just carry on and hopefully they will move on from that. If you're not reciprocating the love and like the affection and the flirting and stuff, then they should easily be able to move on and hopefully they just appreciate the fact that you're still in their life because some people run away from that. I think we just have a conversation with her and be like, look, I'm not into that gender. I'm really happy for you though that you are comfortable enough in your sexuality to like, like someone and tell them, but it's just not for me. I like who I like and you're my best friend and I don't want it to go any further than that. And they should respect that. My best friend started online gaming with my brother. They started talking every day and I was happy because initially they hated each other. The next few months, my best mate started ignoring my messages and would FaceTime my brother when I was in the same room as him. That's odd behavior. She once even hung up the FaceTime to me and another friend and then called him when he was in my room. She then messaged me saying she had a crush on him and it was mutual. I kind of saw that coming. I didn't know what to think, so I said, okay, but I wasn't that happy. Her parents then found out and stopped her talking to my brother. Well, that's really mean. Why did they have to stop talking? She wouldn't talk to me about anything as she found it awkward, and now I think it's happening again, but she won't tell me. Am I just being an arsehole about it? Am I the only one to find it weird? So when I did the people's diary, I had a conversation with Freya and I was like, oh my God, if you ever liked one of my brothers, I'd kick off, but that's because they're happily married. She then said she'd find it weird if someone fancied her brother because like it's her brother. Like it's just off limits that like, you just don't mix friends and family. But then we both came to the conclusion that that is incredible. If my best friend, bear in mind if my brothers were single and definitely closer to my age, which they're not either of those, if my best friend fell in love with my brother or just started to like him and was talking to him and stuff, my only issue now that I have like a more mature mindset is I wouldn't want either of them to get hurt because it's really difficult on who to side with. Like if your brother cheated on your best friend, obviously you'd side with your best friend because you got cheated on, but then it's your brother, like that's blood, you know? Whereas if it was the other way around, you'd then completely have to lose your best friend. I mean, if they cheated, they're pretty anyway so not really losing much but if your best friend cheated on your brother you then would have to completely lose your best friend because it's your brother you know what i mean in a more positive light your best friend could become your sister-in-law which is insane because it means that they'll always be around and what better person would you want your brother to be with than someone you know inside and out? Like you wouldn't want them to be with someone that they've only just met and you don't know anything about over someone you know everything about, you know what I mean? The only time I'd be funny about it is if I knew they weren't right for each other. If like I knew my best friend had done some horrible shit and I knew they would mistreat my brother, then I wouldn't want that to happen. Obviously I don't know your circumstance, but 
they sound like they're just innocently falling in love with each other and I think that's completely fine. I think kind of needs to let your ego down a little bit, let your guard down, obviously you're protected by your brother. And sometimes people do find it weird when like friendships and family get like crossed over. But again, same situation as I just said before about the best friend and the boyfriend arguing and stuff and how you want to resolve that. It's a similar situation if it just keeps going on and you're the outsider trying to make an issue and you're trying to stop them from talking and just make sure that they never speak to each other again type of thing so that they don't date. You're making their life harder and you're just gonna push them away. So the end goal from that is you're just gonna have no one there. You're not gonna be as close to your brother and he's not gonna trust you. And then you've lost your best friend because she already doesn't trust you because she finds it awkward. Whereas if you made them both feel comfortable enough, then they would open up to you and they'd be happy, you'd be happy. And yeah, everyone would have a happy ended so i just think talk to your best friend about it sit her down bite your ego a little bit and say yeah look i know you like my brother and if you are serious about this then cool i approve of it and like you can talk you can come around my house you can see him you can do whatever you want take it slow or quick as you want have the same conversation with your brother and leave it as that it's their life like you don't really control what they do but yeah just make sure none of them gets hurt in the same sense of if you I mean, this is the issue though isn't it like if you knew your brother was doing shady shit, you'd want to tell your best friend but then that's your brother you're dobbing it and then if your best friend was doing shady you'd want to tell your brother but then that's your best friend you're doing it it can get complicated but i guess it's the same as if two best friends dated and that normally happens a fair bit because it's just natural so hmm. i don't know it's a bit of a sticky one i didn't think about that just let it happen do what i said let it happen let them date life happens as life happens and if it gets messy it gets messy they'll learn their lessons it's nothing to do with you darling it's nothing to do with you basically my boyfriend has been here since christmas due to lockdown and i love him and his company but i also love my own space am i a bad person for wanting him to go back home once he can absolutely not sometimes being around someone 24 7 can make you clash and like even I'm a people person and sometimes if I'm around people 24 7 then you kind of just get like a bit aggy with each other I discovered this living with Byron and Freya like we have petty arguments and I feel like in a relationship that's not healthy you do need to have your own space and um, it's to get your independence like even in a relationship you shouldn't be codependent on one another you should be able to have your alone time to do what you want to do just like clear your head a little bit have some time away it's like if you were working on the same project 24 7 without breaks you're gonna get agitated probably not really be focused on the initial brief anymore and yeah your work is just not going to be as good whereas if you had breaks and like you spaced it out and you had your own time to like just chill by yourself it's going to be a lot better because you're taking breaks in between so i feel like a relationship is kind of similar you have to be able to go away from that person and chill do your own thing like maybe oh, i love when i can just like be away from my friends for a little bit clean my house just chill and watch a netflix film like you know have your own space do my nails in the bath like what i'm doing right now it is so nice to just switch off from the world for a little bit and not be so full of i feel like you also need to have your own space in order to think about things like life can go so quick and be very fast paced so just to sit there and indulge in that moment a little bit and think wow i have like such a good relationship and my friends are amazing and my family's amazing or like this happened this week and maybe that wasn't so good but like this is also happening it's good for your mental health to just sit and chill and let yourself indulge in your feelings so i don't think you're a horrible person for that at all that is completely natural and hopefully your boyfriend feels the same like i wouldn't mention it obviously i wouldn't be like hi can you go home now i know that he will go home eventually because he's gonna want his own space too everyone does that's just natural so i don't think it's a conversation you need to have but just know you're not a horrible person for it because that's just natural everyone wants their own space every once in a while oh my god i have been sat in that position for so long i just need to oh wow i actually think i'm gonna get like some form of back issue from sitting like that oh my god this feels so good okay i'll come back up i'm coming oh my back oh why did I sound like a whale? You're having me on. So you can be guys, thank you so, so much for watching another Tug Talks episode. If you do have any dilemmas that you want me to give a little bit of advice on, or maybe someone in the comments can give a little bit of extra advice, then definitely head down into the description. You will see the link for the forum down below. Also, if you click on the link tree, there is many important links in there, and also the people's diary, of course, if you do have anything you want to get off your chest. Not necessarily advice, but just something that you can't stop thinking about and you just want to get out of your head and tell someone. If you do have any further advice, advice for anything I have said in this video then definitely make sure you head down below in the comments and give a little bit of extra added goodness hopefully we can help some people and just like I don't know help their brain a little bit help the ball roll it yeah I love you all so so much and I will see you in the next video